So I've taken a few days off and not posted any update, um, but that has solely be been because I've been kind of busy working on some other projects. So um, here it goes. Here's my update over the past few days regarding my health and my skin and my current diet. Everything is still going really well, and I think I mentioned in the last video that I was thinking about taking back some of the foods that I had introduced because they did cause some heartburn, they did cause my skin to get a little more red, it seemed, and they definitely caused some indigestion uh, that I had. So I decided to roll them back, specifically those foods that I had introduced uh, were yogurt, some a little bit of honey, eggs, and that was it, and sauerkraut. Um, but those were the main foods that I had slowly introduced. And what I mentioned last time, I think, was what happened with the yogurt and the honey, especially, is that I was I kind of started binging on those foods, especially the the ones that I ate with the honey, because my body really craved those carbs. Apparently, after such a long time of time of not having eaten any carbs, my body really wanted those carbs. And so once I started eating all those foods with honey, I couldn't stop basically, and I overate a lot. And also, you're meant to reintroduce foods very slowly. So ideally, one teaspoon per day at a, as an introduction, and then increase that amount to two, two teaspoons, three teaspoons a day, and so on to get your give your body a chance to to actually get used to those foods, give your digestive system a, a chance to be able to break down those foods that the new foods that it's not used to and basically your whole flora your whole um gut flora inside of you your enzymes bacteria they all have to repopulate and yeah change the way they they break down different nutrients that come into your body via different foods so i'm definitely going to do that differently now uh for the past Four or five days, I think I've I've gotten I've just cut everything back down to eating broth, chicken broth usually with meat, so chicken meat or beef. That's been my diet for the pa <clears throat> for the past four or five days, and that so that's basically breakfast, lunch, and dinner is um, yeah the broth and the meat. And just t today, actually, I started introducing soft-boiled eggs again. And ideally, you want to do like one egg per meal. So you just make the broth with the meat and then add like a soft-boiled egg into. You can add it into the broth or on the side if you like. And uh, yeah, then eat that together. And now I'm going to wait kind of... Uh, <laughs> There's no no great way to say it, but for my next bowel movement, and then see uh, what that's like. In the meantime, observe how my stomach is feeling, how my digestion is feeling, and if there's any unusual things happening, any discomfort going on, any heartburn going on, for example, acid reflux, like those were would be signs that your body, my body, is perhaps not ready yet for the next food introduction. So far. Uh, since this morning, <laughs> it's been going good. I hadn't had any problems with eggs. Um, no initial reaction, no oral allergy, um, as I do have with raw fruit. But yeah, no problem so far with the eggs. So I'm just going to do that for probably two to three days and then see what comes next after that. If that goes well, I'll probably add some more probiotic foods like uh, kefir or yogurt. That would probably be the next choice um yeah but it's um it's really good like also my skin has been has been feel, feeling really good um not inflamed at all very very subtle and just calm uh, that i mean calm is probably the best word used to describe eczema skin if you're if you're an eczema sufferer or you had eczema in the past or psoriasis any kind of skin condition you know the feeling of calmness of your skin not being red, itchy, and inflamed is one of the best feelings uh, you can possibly have. And I've really noticed that in the past few days that even on days when I didn't do anything special, I was not, I was, I wasn't pursuing a ton of activities. I wasn't doing 
anything really great but i i just felt so good in my body that, that at, at times i just started like smiling uh to myself because of the comfort i felt of just just being with myself and my own body so that was yeah that was super um i just caught myself you know smiling at times um uh, when i was just sitting around sitting in the car sitting at home and just feeling really comfortable and relaxed and I think that's one of the that's one of the main things I've noticed that when I used to have eczema and more asthma symptoms, I would constantly feel kind of stressed out and under tension because you never know is it gonna if it's gonna get worse if what you're gonna eat is gonna make it worse. You just feel like your whole body is kind of inflamed and itchy and red. Um, so that really causes a lot of mental anxiety and stress as well. And now that I've been eczema free for a couple of weeks, I really felt this kind of huge mental weight kind of drop and just leave me with a sense of relaxation and relief from that, from that mental anguish that I was carrying around before. So probably... If you have similar experiences, you know, let me know. But that's what it's been like for me, just not having to deal with <laughs> also the psychological issue of, you know, going outside with like a short sleeve shirt like I'm wearing today. That would have been a stressful situation because you feel like people looking at you, looking at your eczema patches and, and that kind of stuff. So it makes everything just it makes everything more it makes everything harder and more difficult to be honest. So compared to that kind of mental stress and um, tension, doing all the work that's required to keep this diet up and to keep this, keep the food healthy, keep the body healthy is really nothing. I mean, I, I, I'm fine doing that for the rest of my life, you know, taking care of what I eat and, and so on. If that means that I don't have to deal with the anxiety and stress caused by the eczema like that's a trade-off i'm i'm willing to take really every time so that's where i'm at right now um i'm also i'm thinking a lot about a lot of things i've been thinking about um yeah finance a lot lately uh crypto like a lot of different topics going on in my head and i'm i might expand the scope of this channel perhaps to include some more of those kind of philosophical financial topics um, to talk about those as well but my main focus will still be the health my health and the health of any other eczema sufferers out there so with that said I also have some uh, interesting interviews coming up with a GAPS practitioner uh, possibly we'll do that podcast next week or the week after and also I have a podcast coming out on homesteading and sustainable farming creating a homestead organic homestead yourself how to grow stuff how to raise animals how to just you know make sure you get healthy good nutrition and that will be probably in the next coming weeks also so i'm excited for that and yeah i'll let you guys know once once those uh, episodes are live and available but in any case um glad to see you guys again and if you have yeah if you know you want to share your story if you had any experiences in the meantime if your eczema improved or did not improve uh, let me know leave me a comment and let me know how it's been for you uh, i'd love to hear your experience and hope to see you very soon <laughs> bye